Okay, it looks like we are live. So welcome back. Today, I'm going to be continuing to work on my virtual machine. So, um, today is Halloween, so happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to be doing two very spooky things. Um, so, first of all, um, negative numbers. We don't have support for those at all in the slightest. Um, so basically, you would expect uh, something like this, right? And then print, uh, just for example. Uh, let me, there we go. Uh, so if I compile this, uh, whoops, I have to build, build everything first. Um, and, stop in, and it just pushes five. Uh, so we need negative numbers. So this should be fairly easy to implement. Um, and it's really, it's supported on the level of the virtual machine. It's just the assembler doesn't support it. So that is where we need to look. So in the TASM Lexer, um, numbers, generate num. So basically we need to check. Um, yeah, actually we can check here. Mm hmm. So, uh, where are we checking if it is, is digit? So right here, basically what we can do is else if, um, current, current index equals a negative like that. Um, then I can type properly. There we go. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if it is negative, then we can make a new token. We'll generate number current, uh, current index line character and left. So basically what we need to do, um, well, let's look at how, let's look at how generate num is implemented. Generate num. All right. Uh, whoops. Generate num. Right up here. Uh, yeah, right here. So. Uh, we get the keyword name so i'm thinking what if we uh what if we pass is negative basically to it um so what we can do actually or we could just check it in here so if uh current current index equals a negative symbol like that then uh we just set the first uh, the first thing equal to a negative character, and then we do a uh, keyword length plus plus, just like that, and that should set it because it's only going to be first. Uh, and I think that should be all that we need to do in here. Um, yeah. So then down here is where we actually call it. So yeah, let me see what that does. Now. All right. Uh, array subscript is not an integer. Okay. So print print index. Okay. Um, why? Actually, here, that is up here. So, right here. Um, yeah, current, current index equals negative. So, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because I need to actually uh, do that. And then this should be keyword length rather than name. And there we go. So, let's build that. And there we go. So now let's run it on the test.tasm file. Uh, stack overflow. Okay. So that is in the lexer.c actually. So line 38. Uh, da -da -da. So for some reason, uh, actually, I think I know what the issue is. Uh, we don't need to do this, uh, probably. If I build that again. Uh, all right, so now there is just an issue in there. So that's a bit strange. Um, actually, I know what I need to do. So I do want that there, but in generate num, I actually have to iterate the uh, iterate the current index, just like that. And that is the issue. So it was just looping for it. Ah, uh, there we go. And then that's done. So that might be it. Um, yeah, actually. So that's all that we need to do for that. Um, yeah. So if I open the test.tasm file now, uh, what if we make it a flip? Then what will happen? That's not him. Um, okay. And then negative five is the flip. So it actually worked. So it was uh, quite easy. So let me make sure all the tests still compile. Uh, okay. Doesn't seem to be any errors. So let's run the dot tim okay uh and then we'll run the hello world uh and then uh, 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 biz buzz sure 
Okay, yep, yeah, it all seems to still be working. So that is good. So, yeah, that was that was pretty easy, actually. Uh, I thought it would be a bit harder than that. Um, maybe we could... We could do a very large number like that. Uh, test that thing. Okay, and yeah, so that... It all seems to work to me. Um, okay, so let's actually make a test for that. Uh, test slash negative dot thousand. Okay, and then I'll open that right here. Uh, negative, there we go. So yeah, just push uh, negative 69, push negative, uh, actually I'll do it like this. 35, and then we'll do add, and then we'll do ink to stir. So we'll actually test if that works on negative, uh, which it should, should work. And then we can push standard out, and we'll write, and we'll also... Right up here, we'll import um, under devs dot cache. All right, and let's see what happens. Uh, actually, I have to go into the folder. As um, uh, and this is negative. There we go. Okay. Okay, sixty nine. So yeah, let me also push stir new line, and then okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have the new line, and then what else do we need to do? Um, so we just basically need to print the new line. So we'll get sir zero, and then we'll push thing out again, and then we will just write, and that should print the new line. I think there we go. So sixty nine. Uh, that is perfectly right. So yeah, I think that's all that we need to do for that. Uh, do do do. So let me remove uh test dot as well as test dot thing. Okay, and then I will commit all this. Uh, so this basically added support for negative numbers in the assembly. Essentially is all we did. And uh, added added a text for negative numbers. All right, and we'll push that. Push that directly into the repo. Yes, sir. Okay, and now that should be up there now. Perfect, okay. So then the other thing, it's basically just going to be maintenance, right? Like going through, cleaning some things up, and making it a bit nicer. So I'll run and get clean. Uh, so I guess we'll start in the virtual machine itself. So in 10.h, actually, is there some stuff in here that we could make a little better? So that is fine. Uh, Word. So I was thinking about the this, right? Um, right now, this is the data union, right? So we can define data stack. So we're using that for the string stack. I was planning originally on doing making a data stack, basically. We can push any type of data. Uh, so it could be a string, a word, whatever. Um, but then I was thinking, there's not really a point to that because you can just use the regular stack. So I don't think we need this. So I'll probably just get rid of that entirely. And that is going to mess some things up. Um, yeah, and then we need to actually do it like this. String inside. So yeah, we'll kind of, I'll just remove that and then remove this entirely. And then there's going to be quite a few places where it breaks. So uh, I can build it and there we go. Yeah, so we can start there, 284. Yeah, so this dot stir, uh, we just want it like that. All right, and then we have 233. Basically anywhere where we put dot stir uh, can just be completely removed like this, I think. Uh, that should be fine. All right. And that is 232. So that's actually right here. I looked right over that. Okay. And we have six. Bah, bah, bah. So this actually is two on one line. That's quite impressive. Uh, yeah. So I will just get rid of all this. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, okay. Like 40 here as well. And then also we use data somewhere. Oh, I guess we don't. Oh, I thought we did in the push stir. Oh, but I guess I probably got rid of that, right? Uh, push stir. Yeah, we only have the instruction now. Uh, but we do have this. But it just takes character anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright, yeah, so that is good. Uh, so we do have a couple other things. Did you mean run instructions? Okay. There is data. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that is actually in TASM. As you might see. So, yeah. We, I knew I used this somewhere. Alright, so this can just be actually like that, and then max string size. Max clear size. String size, there we go. 
And then here, do I actually, uh, I don't think I do. All right, uh, whoops, I didn't need to do that actually. Uh, da, da, da. So that is in Tazim.c as well. So we just have, oh, that's actually in the Tazim.h. So let me open that. Yeah, here we just need this to be a char, uh, an array, just like this. And then this will be a uh, max string size. There we go. Uh, and then we have dot stir. Oops. Um, yeah, dot stir. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do do do. So, all right, I guess I can just jump through like this. There we go. Here is where we do that. So we can just get rid of that entirely. And that might be the last thing. All right, so let me make sure everything works. Uh, so we'll do hello world, that has Hello world, Tim. All right, and we'll do the fizz buzz. Tim, all right. And then the last one, Fib Fibonacci. And there we go. All right, so everything seems to still be working after that. So that is good. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so now we'll work through the rest of it. Alright, so I don't really use these, so I don't think I need them, because it's kind of just... Uh, I guess it it might slow down the compile time a little bit, so if I get rid of it, it should all still work. And we'll, yeah, we'll, I'll just test out the div, and it still works. Alright, so yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so I probably could add the native, uh, the native instructions in here as prototypes. So if I go up here, native functions, yeah. So let me just, uh, natives, and then rest, basically, is what that is. There we go, okay. So yeah, I will just uh, put these in here. So push, yeah, this is actually the end. So I'll go up to the top of it. Um, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, right here, native open. And have to add the semicolon. Uh, right as well. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. Read. Uh, maybe I'll add the semicolons all after. All right. Close. And mallet. Uh, free. Exit. And uh, int to ASCII. So I believe that was it for those. Oops. And there we go. Alright, uh, and yeah, that should be it. Okay, so then we have the other ones up here. Um, da, da, da. So yeah, we have just these helper functions. So I'll just kind of put uh, helper functions. And then I will define those up here as well. So get stream. Uh, da, da, da. Into stir. Okay, almost done, almost done. Reverse stream. There we go. And I'll just replace all of these. Perfect. Okay. And if I build it, it all still works. Uh, okay. And then I'm pretty sure I have most of these defined already. Zoom out a little. And I'll just go through. Hey, just follow me on your Twitter, and I hope you follow back. Okay. I will look at that after, after the stream. Emma Grace. Appreciate it. Uh, so we have print stack. Uh, that should be defined. Um, print stack. It's all the way here though, but it's at the top. Uh -huh. All right. Actually, I went through a lot of this. Uh, why was I doing? So we have push. Uh, we don't have push stir. I don't think. Ah, uh, yeah. So right here, push stir, and then I want them in the right order. So pop, and then index swap. I'm pretty sure I already have that already. So then get stir from stack. We do have that. Um, yeah, print stack, that is there. Write program to file. Read from file. Uh, run instructions, and we do have that. And then reverse string. It's actually... Uh, yeah, so I actually defined that last, so I'll move it up to the... I already defined it actually in the helper function. So, that should be good then. There we go. Alright, so now... Da -da -da. Now what we can do is actually go through here and try to clean some more things up. Uh, so I don't think I have any like loose uh, print statements. Uh, yeah, right. so that's actually the... that's not right. 
Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I guess that's the only place I use that. That's. Oh, I'm in the wrong file. I am. All right. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Whoops. Uh, right here, we can look for any print statements that we don't want. So not the F printf because those are for error logging. Uh, printf. So that is the print stack. So that's that's fine there. Uh, yeah, and it looks like uh, looks like it's pretty much all good. Uh, and that is the instruction print. So that's fine as well. All right. So that looks good. In terms of print statements. Um, so halt. Yeah. So I don't know that we necessarily need halt. Um, I'll leave it, but yeah, because we have the exit now, um, and that's kind of, kind of replaces halt, um, but I guess halt is a different kind of instruction, so maybe not. Uh, so this is fine. So I was thinking this could probably be implemented in, on the level of the assembly. Like we're very close to that. We just need like returns, um, or like a return instruction. And then I'm pretty sure we could implement this same thing. Uh, so that might be better. Like rather than having a native function for it, we actually anything like that that we can do in the assembly, and then we can just make it a library, right? Um, so I think that could be cool. Okay. So yeah, this um, this could be a actual. It could be a um, an array. So something like. Uh, well, actually, I think it's a file pointer. Uh, let's see. So this is strings, and then so this equals in uh, out and error. So I don't think we need this default because uh, it shouldn't encounter that. Uh, and I think that would work. So let me just try it. So just return streams. Um, so we need an index actually uh, because bring that as int basically. Yeah, so that is the index. Um, so I think that'll work rather than this. Um, and I can test that pretty easily because we do use this. So if I build this, uh, and that doesn't work. Uh, but void was expected. Oh yeah, so this um, uh, maybe. All right. Uh... So I'm not sure, like, the file type, how it all works. Uh, initializer is not constant. So, oh, okay, so it changes. So this might not actually work like this. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, that is fine. So we can just go back to that. Uh, there's still a better way to do this. Let's look. Um, right now we return these based on that. Um, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. And why do we need this if we have the default? Yeah, it still is fine. Uh, okay. So, whoa, my uh, mouse went crazy. That's why you don't use a mouse. Uh, yeah, so we have all these uh, open modes. Uh, so that's fine, how those are done. Yeah, so that's just the way. Uh, that's all good. Uh, native open. So I'm just looking for some stuff that I can kind of clean up here and make make it look nicer, perform better, um, maybe not cause a memory leak, that kind of thing. It's probably a good idea. Uh, yeah, probably a few memory leaks in, in this program. Uh, so that is fine, I think, how all that works. Um, I'm pretty sure all these functions are mostly fine. Uh, this is a little scuffed, but not, not too bad. Uh, here, yeah, we just now like that's fine. Okay, exit, uh, that is fine. All right, uh, yeah, so that looks good. Looks good to me. So, yeah, exciting content. Uh, let me actually, so let me see why I know it. Where do I use that? Uh, so actually, let me go to the first one. There we go. Uh, so here, yeah, okay, that is fine. Here we actually allocate this, and then we push the pointer. So what we should probably do is allocate this and then realloc. So we'll just do stir equals realloc. Uh, realloc stir and then size of character times stir index. 
actually, uh, yeah, so that should be fine. Uh, if I did that correctly, then, so we actually have tests where we can make sure that works. Uh, so something like fizzbuzz, where we use that. And, okay, it still works. And then that way we don't use as much memory. Uh, but we don't ever actually really want to free it. It'll kind of just free on its own at the end of the program. Uh, you really just want to free on something that you're calling over and over again. Um, so most of these functions don't necessarily need that. Yeah. Because, like, there's no point in putting free at the end of the program, and then immediately after, it would have just been freed by the operating system anyway. Um, at least as far as I know. I don't think that's necessary. Oh, uh, yeah. So let's look at the rest. So get string from stack. So buffer index equals that. Do, do, do. So then we can just reallocate to be the size of the buffer. So, yeah, I said I already had that here. But I plunked it out. Uh, whoops. Build it. And then... This by Tim. All right, and that is fine. But actually, yeah, so we do use that. So that seems to work all good. So now, uh, buffer, uh, well, I could just do buffer index instead of doing this, right? Buffer index. Uh, I guess we do minus minus there. So let me do something like that. And then we'll test it one more time. Is why it's Tim. And yeah, all right, so that all seems fine to me. Uh, yeah, so now let's go to the next one. All right, here we allocate the instructions, and this is in the read, right? Yeah, read program from file. We allocate the size for the instructions. Uh, so I think we can actually reallocate these. Uh, yeah, we don't need that. Reallocate it after we read it, because then we have the program size. So, uh, whoops, got the wrong one there. Uh, yeah, right here. So we can set instructions equals uh, realloc. Oops, realloc. Uh, and we'll just put instructions, and then we'll do size of ints times uh, machine program size. Because uh, then, uh, whoops, assuming that all works. Uh, so we'll just try this one. Okay, and I'll make sure it works as well. All right, yeah, so that seems good. Because uh, then that way, yeah, we just reallocate it. Because for this, we're allocating times the max stack size, which is 1,024 right now. So we're just allocating uh, this times 1,024. So I don't know exactly what the size of inst would be. Uh, it's I think it's like 16 or something like that. 16 bytes. So 16 times 1,024, we can see what that is. So yeah, 16,000 bytes. So that's like 16 kilobytes, I believe, if I am not mistaken on that. Um, so that's quite a bit that we're just allocating there. Especially if it's just like a hello world or whatever, that's three lines or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So mm, yeah, so that is much more efficient, I think. So we allocate it, but then we reallocate back. And because this actually stays throughout the whole program as it's running, because this is part of the runtime. Yeah, so I think that is good. So that was the last one. So uh, we can do a similar thing. Uh, I think this is a good place because we do have quite a few malics in here. Uh, so this actually allocates to the right size initially. Um, in the program, let me see actually. Uh, do we return the program from this actually? Yeah, we do return program. So, and that's where we're setting it. So we can free it after this. Uh, but you can't really free it before you return it. So that kind of just yeah well that actually this so it's getting set to this so we don't want to free it uh and then this let's see can we free program after this uh because we're not well we are setting it equal to a pointer um are the machine instructions is it a pointer so we have machine right here we do so it might actually break it. Uh, so if you look here, so actually this is the chasm, so, uh, yeah, so it doesn't work, uh, because we free it and then we don't have access to the instructions anymore, so, yeah, that is, I assume that would happen, but, uh, so we can't really, let's see, where else do we know? That might be it, um, alright, here we allocate the specific instruction, um, yeah, and then here we're allocating result, 
So this is chopping the file. Uh huh. Okay. So until it is that, and then result plus index. Okay. So then we can do result equals realloc. And so bar times index, right? Uh, something like that. All right. Uh. Oh yeah, we need to actually provide the original one like that. So there we go. So let's try that out, please, buddies. And there we go. All right. Yeah. So that is good. Uh, because then it sets it properly. So that is looking good. So where else do we have this? All right. So that was it. Uh, in the instruction, we push program. So. I think that actually copies the instruction, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so inst value. So we can free the program right after this. So program size, okay. So, or we could just make it a pointer. Um, well, yeah. I think it's probably a better idea to free it, right? Uh, so we'll do that. Because uh, the instructions aren't very big, so passing them by value is not that big of a deal. So after we push program, we can do free instruction. Uh, and if I do this, uh, and we'll go and do it here again, is by Kevin. And it still works, okay. And so we can actually do this in a couple other places where we actually call push program. Uh, I think we have a few other ones. Uh, no, okay, I guess that's actually it. So, I must have removed those. So, that is fine then. Yeah, so now we free the instruction and it's all good. Okay, so now let's look in the parser. Uh, and we have a few of these in here as well. So, here we are appending. So, we make a new one, yeah. Uh, so, the thing about this, we can't free the list because we do use it in the next one. So, we have to keep it there. So, what is in? Um... It's kind of a weird name. Oh, just int. Um, okay, so we're setting the line number. Oh, let's see. I want to see all the malics that we do. So yeah, uh, I guess that was it. So in here, why do we have to do this, though? Handle token definition. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. It's kind of hard to read with all this. All right. So we're putting it in the hash map. Oh, because it needs to be a pointer. We could just, uh, well, it has to stay. The life has to stay, right? Uh, yeah. So we can't really free that because we do use that. So that is fine. So now in the lexer, we do, um, we allocate a couple of things, uh, quite a few times. So open file. So we f read into that. So that should be fine. We get the length, so yeah, I'm fine with that then. Uh, keyword name. So let me, then we'll reallocate the keyword name to be the length. So keyword name equals realloc. Um, keyword name, and then size of character times um, the keyword length. And then, uh, just to check to make sure it still works, and there we go. And okay, it all works. Uh, yeah. And then it will allocate to the be the right size. So we actually do kind of the same thing in here. Actually, this should be number name. Num name. Uh, and I think that would be better. So we do have to change a couple of things in here. Um, yeah. So if I just go ahead and do that. Num length plus plus. All right. Um, because this is not a keyword. So. That name doesn't make sense. And actually, this needs to be numb as well. I could do uh, search and replace, I suppose. Search and replace. Okay, yeah. Um, let me try that. So if I just uh, go like this, and then keyword, and replace with num. Oh, I forgot to, uh, I forgot to put the S. So yeah, I'll just do this again, and then s slash um, keyword, and replace it with no. All right, and then let's see. Um, if I forgot any, it will tell me. So yeah, keyword length on your player. Right here, this needs to be num length. 
Okie dokie. And then, all right, there is, all right, so it looks like in here, I didn't set the Monero next to that, uh, so that is fine. And then it looks like this should be the last one. Okay, and build, all right, perfect, perfect. So, yeah, this, all right. Uh, yeah, so that should be good now. And then we can do the same thing here that we did with the other one. So we'll do num name equals realloc uh, num name and then size of character times num length. And then I have to check to make sure it works, of course. Uh, okay, from int. So it doesn't like that. So, oh, it's because I spelled it wrong. Realloc. There we go. All right, and now we'll test it. So, his buzz is a good place to test it, I think. Yeah. And there we go. It works. So, that is good. Let's look at the next one. Generate character. So we actually have the same thing in here. Um, however, we start by two, and but it could be more depending on that. So we can do the same thing. So at the end, we'll reallocate it. Equals realloc size of character times character length. Uh, is that not the name? Our uh, current index? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So I guess that's fine then. Okay, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Malik, uh, whoops. So this one, uh, we have the same thing in the string name, so we can do that. And these strings can get pretty long, so this is a good idea to do this. Realloc size of character times string index. Uh, is that what it is? Yeah, string index. So now we can test that again. Again on BizBuzz, uh, probably works good. So two of the arguments. Yeah, I forgot to provide the original one. So that is quite easy. String name. And there we go. Here's guys passing. Here's guys Tim. And there we go. It seems to be working. So now, now it is a bit more memory safe. Okay. So let's keep on going. So malloc uh, current. All right, that is all right. So that was the last malloc that we had actually. Um. So here we have that. Okay. So that should be good now. Uh, a bit more memory safe. I uh, what other? I don't think there is any other files that are uh, any source files that would have any of that. So we do have the preprocessor. So I could look at that. Um. Pip. So down here. Uh yeah, let's just search for now. So we have that. Um file info. Okay, yeah, so that's obviously not very efficient. Uh-huh. Current. So what when we call this actually? So we call it here prepo. Um could we free it? Uh free some things? Like, well, we get the link here. Uh, we need that, though. Yeah. All right, that's probably fine. Uh, that should be fine. So now, uh, let me actually fix up the header file. Because uh, I don't think we have all the prototypes in here. Uh, so, let's start from the top. So we have is name. Uh, so we don't have that, definitely. I do not see it in there. So, is name. All right. Uh, open file, we do have that, and we might have the rest actually. Push token, pop token, we have both of those. Uh, pretty token, print token, init token. Check built in, alright, check label type, we don't have that. Uh, okay, and then we have generate keyword, uh, we do have that though. So, what is, oh, whoops, that's my man. Uh, check label type goes after that. Okay, and then we have. We have one more. 
Valid escape character. We don't have to find that. So that goes after the num. Uh, yeah. So there we go. Valid escape character. And then generate character. We do have that. But then we don't have the string. So there we go. And that uh, should be the last one. Yep. All right. Perfect. So let's make sure it builds. Uh, CD test. Not pets. And then is by 10. All right. Perfect. So now, uh, now I'll actually do the same thing on the parser.h, there we go, and I will quit out of these. So now, da -da -da, append, uh, we already have that, print list, we have that, and it'll token that. Uh, we do not seem to have that. To do, okay, and then generate list, uh, print syntax there, we don't have that. That's something useful that we could be using, perhaps, well, I guess not. This is the only place where we handle the syntax errors, really. Uh, expect token, we do not have that. Generate list, we have that one. Mm, all right, that's a big one. Check labels. Uh, okay, we can define that. And then I think that is it. Parts. Yep. All right, so that is good. Um, now test h, we can do that one as well. So push program, pop program, we have that. And then length of list, we don't have that one. Uh, I guess we don't have pop program either. So let me do that. Do we even use that though? Do we call it anyway? Pop program. Uh, do not. So I don't know that we need it. Uh, I feel like I should leave it just in case though. Uh, this can be defined in here because it is a global variable. So yeah, that uh, should be fine then. So generate instructions. Uh, we do have that. Chop file by dot. Uh, we have that one as well. And then main. All right, so that should be fine. Let's build it. Is by chasm, and then make sure it all works. And there we go. All right, perfect, perfect. So it should all be should all be consistent now. So now um, I'm thinking perhaps we could solve some problems, uh, like some programming problems in the assembly. Code. So let me clear. All right, so let's go into tests. Actually, I'll do it in the right here, test.tab. So let's just look at uh, something like project viewer. Uh, and we can look, because it's much more powerful than the last time I was trying to solve it in this. Um, because we have strings and all that stuff. So, let's see, how do you uh, get to it again? Archives. All right, multiples are free. Even Fibonacci's. Um, okay. There's also uh, this one. So, projects. Uh, and this is just a list of a bunch of projects. So, we can actually look at like the text ones. Yeah. So, we have FizzBuzz, reverse a string. Can we do that? Um, I don't know that we can because would that work? Uh, I want to test something. So let me do push stir test and then get stir zero and then push one and add and then push in, uh, one to stand it out and then native one. Uh, Alright, so that actually does work. So we might be able to do something. Uh, maybe. If we have... Mm, Alright, est. So yeah, if we push instead 3 here, then it will just print... Uh, yeah, t. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah. So we can index the string. Um, so how could we go about doing that? So what if we compare uh, the current index? What happens if we do that? So if we push, uh, well, let's see. So mm, if we push the character of t, right? And then we compare equal on the first one. And then compare equal. And then we can do, I'll just print it then. And I'll not do that. So zero. So they are not equal. Uh, so I don't think that works. Um, but if I do that, 
So we get T on top. And what happens if I do that as well? Uh, yeah, so we can't really interpret it as a character like that. Because it is um, it's a pointer. So what if... What if... Hmm, trying to think. So reversing the string. Yeah, you'd have to compare... Like, I uh, would push that one in front of Then that's what we get. Uh, but what if... Uh, what if that is a string? So can we push an empty string? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then get rid of this. And, alright, so it still doesn't print that because it's not printing the individual character. Right, okay. So I'm not sure. Hey, Glatton, I uh, could do that. So, um, well, what if we, uh, push, what if we push, um, A, and then we push stir, uh, blah, blah, and we're pushing into stir A, so we get stir, get stir 1, and then we compare equal. So, what does that, do? uh, so they're not equal, so what if we print both of them? So, it is that, and then, whoops. Then this one is, uh, yes, yeah, so they are different because, hmm. So we need a way to essentially index the, index it. Yeah. So I'm not sure what a good way of doing that would be. To, so basically like, uh, get the index of a string and then push it as a character would that be a good way of going about that i'm not sure so yeah because these well we could do compare string we could have a function for that actually a native function uh if i open in my c so then we add a uh, native sterling something like that or not sterling um sorry stir compare so stir comp I uh, probably would do it here. So void native stir count machine machine, and then yeah. So it'll just pop, uh, pop the two strings at the top of the stack. So yeah, we could do. Uh, so this will be character. Uh, stir one equals pop. Uh, well it's, yeah. So actually, uh, get stir. So get stir from the stack. Actually. How do we get this string? Get stir. Uh, yeah, so right here. So we do that. Push pointer. Uh, yeah, so let me yank these. And then go back up to the top. Mm -hmm. And then right down here, I'll just scroll because that'll... Alright, and then... Da -da -da. So right here. Index. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, so I see how we get it. So we do that. So what we can do is actually... Yeah, so we need an index. Um, Well, no, so if we just get it from the top of the stack, actually. So basically... Yeah, so just pop the stack. So pop, so you would do the get stir, and the pointer would be at the top of the stack. Equals pop, machine, as pointy. And we should cast this to a character, so we don't get warnings. And then stir to can be the exact same thing, except we'll just pop one right below it, and then we can just do uh, stir compare, stir one, and stir two, and then equals zero, so, uh, yeah, so basically we'll just push that, so, and we need to provide the machine as well, and this actually, we might need something like, uh, word result equals, equals this, and then stir 1, stir 2, equals 0, uh, so then, yeah, and then cast this to a word, and then push it in here, push the result. Uh, so let's see what that does, um, yeah, so is this, does this return a boolean value, or, no, no, well, yeah, it would, because of that equals 0, so, um, yeah. So if they're the same, then it returns zero. So uh, we want this to be one or two. So or zero or one, I mean. Uh, da -da -do. 
it. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't like that. But if you cast this to a word, then it doesn't like that. So how do we... Oh, because it's not an int 64t. Uh, we could just make it that, right? Mm, okay, and then, yeah, so now uh, we need to add it down here. So I'll just make it case 90, uh, arbitrary, but so native stir comp machine uh, and break. So then if we call native 90 in with that chasm, whoops, I have the wrong one. Uh, test chasm, there we go. Okay, so basically we can do, yeah, we need to get both the strings and then do native 90 and then that will print whatever is at the top. So if I did everything right, Tim, and then unexpected native call. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, oh, did I not rebuild it? All right, uh, now let me try it. Okay, and there we go. So one, so one, uh, we're kind of interpreting it differently, but basically one means true. So then, because yeah. in the regular one, if they're equal, then it returns zero, because uh, it's like an error. But if we make them not equal, uh, then, okay, not equal. So that is good. So now we can string compare. So, eventually, I would like, real, like to be able to do that from the language itself, rather than utilizing C, but uh, it's fine like this for now. So, yeah, now we can compare strings. Um, yeah, so we need some way to index the strings, though, like I was talking about before, but I'm not sure what a good way to do that would be, necessarily. Like, would an instruction be good for that, or what? Perhaps we could add more string operations. So I think the 90 should be for string operations. So we could do a uh, string copy actually. Uh, stir copy, uh, I think that's what it's called. And then also mem copy, I think. Uh, native mem copy. Uh, so let me just make sure that is the name. Whoops, I didn't need to open this. And exit out of this, and actually I forgot the break here, so there we go. So let me just open up the terminal, and then um, and copy. Okay, so that is what it is. Um, it is what it is. So yeah, basically, this would be for copying memory, right? Uh, so we could have that, and then uh, stir copy. So the string compare would be our string copy when we're writing. If we want to, if we have a string and we want to. Uh, use malloc in the thing we would use this on it and that would copy it so yeah okay so we could try to implement that so at the top da -da -da. so that would go after the string compare before this one so whoops I made it stir copy and we need machine machine and then we'll also add this one and make it mem, mem copy Okay, uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, okay, so. So we'll pop two off the stack. So what is the... First one is the destination. Uh, no, no, we were looking at string copy first. Uh, yeah, so the destination and then the source. So, the destination, so what we can do is pop machine uh, as pointed. So that'll be the allocated space that we want and then we'll do character string equals pop uh, machine dot as pointer and we can pass that to a char star uh, just like that um so which one would we want to pop off first though mm, I feel like the string should be on top and then I think we can just do uh, we can basically just uh, do this and then result equals stir copy because also the other ones uh, I'm not going to implement them now but at, at some point and we'll have dest as well as and that's not a pointer so I need to click that uh, just like that and then we can push machine and result and we can cast this to word pointer like that um, yeah and then that should be at the top of the stack so yeah, 
let me make sure it compiles. Push to find the Alright, so I seem to have messed the thing up. So let me build it. And then scroll up here. So push um hmm. Oh yeah, we need a push uh pointer. Uh-huh. Is it because of this one? So just return. There's no semicolon there. So to you. So for this I guess we can implement it quickly so that we don't get the one for it. So yeah, mem copy. Uh, so it has this similar thing, but it also has the size. So I think we'll pop the size first. Um, so 64 T size equals pop machine dot as int. And then we can do the void. Um, the next one will be the source equals pop machine dot as pointer. And then, yeah. So that could be any type of pointer. It doesn't have to be a character, but it, or a, char star but it could be and then the dash equals pop machine dot as pointer as well so that'll be the last one that'll be the allocated space and then we can just uh void result equals then copy so dash uh source as well as the size and then we can just push pointer machine and then word result Actually, I don't think I need to cast it since it is a void one. Alright, so now we have errors for different reasons, or warnings. Uh, 538. Okay, so I must have missed something here. Uh huh. So I'm not sure what it is. Did I, um, um, this we don't need here. Mm -hmm. At the end of input. So I'm not sure what that's about exactly. Run instructions is defined but not used. Hmm. So am I missing a semicolon or something somewhere? Or is something open but never closed? So this one worked. We know that one did. So it's one of these. So if I just... Well, if I get rid of them, then it won't work anymore. But... Expected that... Mm. Oh, I see what it is. Uh, so somehow it's not copied. Not sure how that would have happened, but there we go. Okay, and then, so we can actually test this now. So 91 is stir copy, so 91. So basically we will do push, um, uh, we'll push 15 actually. Oops, 15, and there we go. And so we will just push hello world like that. And then we'll do, yeah, get stir zero. Well, actually that afterward. Get stir zero, so that'll be the string. Uh, and actually, yes, we want to call uh, this comes after. Then we want to call uh, native. Uh, what is Melek? So what? Which one is it? Uh, four. Okay, native four. I could do a. Well, no, I won't do that. Uh, so native four. So that should be calling Melek, and then we get the string. Uh, we don't want to print it, and then we want to do native ninety one. So that should be start copy, okay? And then we can do write. We can write it. So we can push one and then negative four. All right, so let's try that. And then, all right, so it prints it out. So I'm assuming that worked. Uh, so we can actually print it out in the melon. Native melon. If you look here, uh, percent s, and then print out star star of the pointer. It's temporary to make sure it works. There we go. And okay, so hmm. 
Okay. Didn't seem to work. Uh, but then it works when we print it afterward. Hmm. All right, that is interesting. Uh, so let me try in the native 91. So that is in here. Stir copy. So let's uh, print F. Uh, let's print the stir as well as the result. Like this. And then we'll build that. Okay, so yeah, it works on both of them. Um, that one, oh, because I put a space. Uh, yeah, so that, that seems to be working fine then. Uh, yeah, so you can now copy it to an allocated space. So that is good. Um, I'm going to trust that the mem copy works. Uh, I guess I could. Yeah, okay, I'll just actually try it out. So 92, so we need to push the size then to be right on top. So 15. And then we do that, and it works. Okay, so yeah, that's all good. All good. So now we have that. So what other string.h? Uh, string.h functions. I just look at all of those. Okay, there we go. So all right, here is summon in. Uh, string compare. So should I have string length? Uh, I think that's something that we could figure out now, though. Because if we do, uh, yeah, we could actually try that. So let me push stir empty, right? Uh, which is just, just basically is, means that. Uh, let me push the empty one. And then, so 90 is string compared. So we'll do, uh, if we get stir 0 and then get stir 1, and then call native 90, and then ba ba ba, we push one and we push uh ba ba ba. Actually, the one can just print because yeah, that'll be a bit simpler. And we do that zero ah. Uh, but then if we basically do if we do this in a loop, right? So um yeah. So here we have the string there, uh the first one, and we need to basically add to it, right? So we make a loop here uh where we get the first string. Do we need to do that actually? Uh, it, well, it does consume it. Uh, so let's actually do, and then we'll have it. And so down here, we'll jump to the loop, uh, zero jump, basically. Uh, and what we'll do is, um, so after this, after we compare it, we'll do swap. No, actually, we'll just have it. So we'll push one and then add. And yeah, so we'll add to it. Mm. So I'm trying to think what is a good way to do this. So we add it to that one. Uh, but then we have the zero jump. So yeah, so if we don't print it here, um, basically we can compare it, or we'll push zero. Actually, mm. so we have zero now. So we'll say this is zero, or it could be one. So zero or one at the top. Then we basically just want to swap it. And then push one, add to it, swap it back, and then zero jump loop. Okay, and then otherwise, um, otherwise we can just, uh, so that might not work. All right, yeah, so, um, I will be right back. Just a quick break. So let me just uh break quickly. Break quickly. Uh yeah, so just give me uh three minutes.
Okay, uh, I am back now. I do apologize for that. So, um, now I should be able to think a bit more clearly. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what we have got. So, this didn't work. So, did I... Oh, I see what the issue is. Uh, I think my mouse died. Nope, it's back now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the issue is because I left that bit. So, let me run that again. And then, alright, it prints that at the end. So... Uh, let's work through this. So we get the first string. We duplicate it. Uh, we get the empty one. Uh, and we call native 90. So that is string compare. Uh, and so this will put either 0 if they are not the same. And 1 if they are the same. We swap it. Uh, because it will consume the top two. So we just have, we have the first string. And then, yeah. Okay, so we have that. Swap it push one and add it so then it will become hello world like that uh yeah and then push one add drop it again uh so that should be fine and then if it's zero at the top then we go to loop otherwise we print um yeah so what we need to actually do is we want to print uh i actually want to do kind of dupe and then zero jump loop. Well, that might not work actually. Uh, zero jump loop. Otherwise, uh, well, we don't really want to print it because we have that. So uh, we need actually a counter here because we don't have the counter for push zero. So that's the length of it. So we can actually, if we do uh, swap zero, push one, add and then swap zero again, put it back there, and then here we can swap zero, and then we can print, basically. Uh, so that didn't work. So what did I do wrong this time? Uh, we push zero, and we push that. That's not a very helpful uh, error message, but okay. So dupe, um, mm, this needs to be index swap, rather than regular swap. So 257. Okay, so I'm thinking that's not quite the right length of the string here. Because uh, if you look here, uh, this is not 257 characters. So that didn't quite work. Um, push zero. Okay, so let's see why. So we can kind of follow along. So we have zero on the stack, and we have the stir on the stack. Uh, and we have two of them actually. Um, and then we get the other stir, so we have the empty one. With that I am um, called native 90 which consumes both of these and then it'll put a zero because they're not the same and then we swap them so we have zero and stir and then we push one and add so then this becomes stir plus one right like that um and then uh, we swap these two so we have zero on the top and that there um and then we index swap that with zero so swap zero and then this becomes one and then we swap it again, 0 and then 1. Um, and that should be the counter. And then if it's 0 on top, we jump to the loop. That's right here. Um, does that consume it, though? I'm trying to think. Um, it should consume it. And then we have stir 1. And then we get the empty stir again. Um, and then once they eat are equal. So I do that. Okay, 15. Yeah, so that way, that time it actually works out. Uh, the only thing is, I feel like we need to do minus 1, because this isn't... Uh, this is really only 14 characters. Um, yeah, so I think we need to do minus 1. So, we can't. We could just push negative 1. Uh, now that we do have support for that. Um, but that's not a very nice solution. Um, instead... Perhaps we need to iterate it differently. So, trying to, what's a good way? So, or we could just subtract at the end. Uh, yeah, and then push one and then sub, and there we go. And now it'll print the right leg. Uh, and then we can adjust this leg uh, to be whatever. So, whatever string, string you want. And then, yeah, if we do that, then we get the length, so 26, and that. Is correct. So now we have sterling, sterling, 
uh, right here, actually. That is it. Uh, and here we can indent the loop as well. So it's kind of clear, kind of clear what's going on. Um, yeah. So if we make like a main here, and then at the top, we actually do jump for me. Um, so we can start there. And then, uh, yeah, so here we can actually uh, whoops, push the string. So it does matter what index we push it in. So right up here, right at the top, we can push the string that we want. Uh, yeah, so string like is, and yeah. And then, yeah, because it has to be defined there. Um, well, I guess it's based on what's on the stack. So if we do, you could push it anywhere. So if we push it down here, by right, in this, and then we do get stir. Uh, so then it would be the zeroth one. So that'd be fine, actually. It's a zero. So if we get rid of this one, uh, well, so we want to push zero after we get the string. So actually, if we swap them, it should be fine. So if we do something like swap, uh, yeah, then you don't want to get so zero. All right, and then we call sterling. Uh, then it will just sort of print what the output is. So, uh, yeah, okay, I messed something up. So, mm, push zero. Let's see, where did I mess up at? Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, did I mess up the swap again? I'm not sure. So this means it's an invalid instruction. Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, because we don't have sterling. So this can be well, no, 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 because that we need to jump sterling like that. There we go. Uh, yeah. Now if we call it, uh, it goes forever and it breaks. Okay. So, oh yeah, because then here we need to actually jump to a. So. We just have an end here, and then we can push uh, exit code. So push zero and then exit like that. Uh, whoops, undeclared label exit. Oh, because this is you know, all right, yeah, yeah, because this is actually uh, native 60, like so. Whoops, there we go. And then okay, so made it 256. Uh, so that's not right. So I did mess something up. Uh, so if we jump here, pushes that one. So that's the string one. Hmm. Because we don't get the string here, so that should be fine. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So then we should have the string on the bottom and the zero on the top, and then we swap them. And then it should be in the right order. For some reason, it is not, though. So when we print it, it's 256. So if we let me make this the same example like that. Uh, yeah, okay. So it just because that's the okay. Uh, jump zero jump loop. I mean, this should all be fine. Well, so if we make this now, push the hello world like that. Actually, I know what the issue is. So this. Yeah, yeah, because it is based on how it's defined. So if we actually, we have to define it up there. So that is what the issue is, because it was getting the wrong one. There we go, 14. So now it is right. Uh, so it has to be defined up there, which isn't, not ideal, but it is what it is. Okay, so then, yeah, we can put any string here, and you'll get the one. And we call this, and there we go, 42. And we can check to make sure that's right. Uh, 42. Yep. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So now, uh, I could make this an example. So if I actually, uh, type paste test.tasm into test slash, um, sterling uh, and then open it up here, uh, and then I could change some of these. So we have the native calls. So actually, let me modify the standard depths, uh, cause we have a few more native calls now. So at depth, uh, so we have stir, Copy. Uh, actually, what were the orders? So I can look down here. Uh, stir compare, stir copy, and mem copy. Okay, so stir compare is uh, native 90. No, uh, that's not right. 
it, no, no, Western Empire. And then stir copy is native 91. Whoops, 91. And then 92 is mem copy. Okay, and I think that's all we need. So then, yeah, instead of 90, we can do, um, uh, let's see, what was, get the, keep forgetting, all right, stir compare, yeah, stir com, um, we actually need to import, uh, standard dash dot dash, so I'll put that up there, um, and then, uh, yeah, so we have that, uh, anywhere else where we call native, we can use that, uh, and it looks like there is nowhere else except for here, we can use exit, uh, and we don't use any other native, so yeah, so let me just make sure that works still. Chasm, uh, and then this is Sterling Chasm. Sterling Tim, and there we go, 42. So that seemed to work. And we can make this anyway. Uh, let's see, put, put string here for low. And so I'll get rid of the new line character because it does make it kind of confusing. All right, 26. And then we look at this. 26, all right, perfect. So it is working. And now we have the definitions for the natives in here. Okay, so now Sterling. The only problem is it's kind of hard to use because of the way the strings work. Uh, and you get them with an index. So it's not really something where you could just like import uh, like string.cache like that. Um, and then use it because you have to know the index of the thing and everything. But it's still a good example, I think. So yeah, I think that is good. So we can actually push these changes. So no, I want to exit out of here. Uh, so commit uh, basically added a couple string. Well, let's all name them all. So we have stir copy, uh, stir compare, and mem copy to the native function, and added a test which shows off the which basically uses which implements uh, certainly basically is what it is so push that okay there we go okay so now uh, let's see what other string so let me do string dot h functions and we could implement a couple more of these either through the natives or actually in the in the program it uh, it depends so c library string that so size t okay so null is in string dot h is that right um all right so just for the first occurrence of the character in the first n bytes of the string point all right so we don't really need that just the useful ones that you use every time you know or all the time i mean all right uh yeah we don't need to do that mem said that'd probably be useful uh, but not, let's see, so concatenating strings, uh, should we implement string con concat? Um, so that could be useful. Well, maybe, maybe I'll do that. Uh, yeah, so right now the numbers are kind of arbitrary, but yeah, so case 93 and then native stir cat, like that, and we pass the machine in there. And so let me actually open up the man page. Uh, man three stir cat. Uh, whoops, got kind of zoomed in. Uh, there we go. So we can implement it as a native right here. So so void native stir cat uh, just like that, and we take the machine. So what all does it take? So we have the destination and the source. So it is rather similar to the stir copy. Uh, so stir is the source equals uh, pop machine dot as pointer okay and then the desk which is not a star it is a void equals pop machine dot as pointer as well so yeah so that is actually no no it is not a I was reading the reading the market so it is a character actually as well uh because these are pending strings so obviously they're gonna both be characters uh yeah and then we can just call stir cat um stir cat on the same thing so best and stir it's like that uh so we can actually make that the result equals that and then push and i don't think this is necessarily a safe instruction uh in all cases because it is c but 
Uh, yeah, so if we push the pointer, then that should be fine. Uh, we might need to cast it to a word, though. Like that. Let's build that. And the statement. All right, so I forgot the break down here. Break, there we go. And, okay, so let's try that out. So let me open cast.chasm. There we go. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so we can go to this because this is not what we were testing anymore. So we'll push a string, uh, test, and then we'll push another one. Uh, test two, basically. Um, and then we'll do get stir zero and get stir one, and then we will do uh native ninety three. I think is what it was. Ninety three, yeah, ninety three. And then we can push one and we can do right. It's actually native one. All right, so that's not chasm. Okay, so uh, I messed something up. Um, hmm. Oh, because this is push stir. So I actually need to fix that. Uh, that is in the parser. We're still expecting the string. So parser. Uh, let's see. So type string. Yeah, here. Uh, we don't want that anymore because that is not how we push strings anymore. So let me just get rid of this entirely because it is no bueno. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, and now. Let me rebuild everything. Now run it. All right, there we go. Yeah, and let me actually make sure it uh, doesn't work anymore if we do this, because we do not want it. Okay, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Um. Yeah, okay, actually I need to update the error message well, because here we, we say expected type of string, but found type of string. Uh, that's not, not very good. So there you go. So build it once more, and then run it again, and there we go. Perfect. So, yeah. Now if we do that, test uh, in, and test, test two. Okay, so I didn't actually add a new line to it, but it looks like it worked. Yep, there we go. So now they are concatenated as one string. So we could allocate memory, and store it in the allocated memory, and then use it. Yeah, so now uh, that's pretty cool. Starting to get some cool stuff. So let's see. There is some other ones we could implement. Um, and I should probably make tests for all these, but I'm not going to do that right now. So actually, let me also add it to the depths. So it is 93 depth. Uh, it is stir cat uh, native 93. There we go. So I'll move this over here. Uh, so what other ones? Um, yep. So that is. Mm, Two, two. Yeah, so we already have string compare. Uh, yeah, so that is the end, first end bytes. That is fine. We don't need that, I mean. Uh, okay, stir copy. Yep. Stir lint. So we implemented that in the assembly, but do we want it as a native instruction as well? Uh, which would be a bit more usable. I feel like that's probably a good idea. Uh, yeah, so I'll just do that. Case 94. Native, uh, and because these can always be removed later once the assembly is actually powerful enough for them to be implemented in itself in an actual usable way. Great. Uh, yeah, so that is stir compare. Stir comp. So that can go right after the one that we just added right here. And bam, there we go. So we can implement that pretty easy. So and then stir 2 equals that. Uh, actually, no, no, it's not stir compare. Um, no, it is stir lin. So, stir lin. Nope, that's not the right thing. Yeah, no, it is. Stir lin. Okay. So, we don't need a string to. Uh, result equals stir lin of stir. Okay, and that should work, actually. So, I do need to change it down here to be stir lin. Uh, there we go. Build that, and, oh yeah, it needs to be, wait, no. Uh, from size t. So yeah, because the result is not a character. Uh, so we can make it. Uh, so it is going to be a size t, but we can just cast it to an integer, I believe. So, uh, ba -ba -da, stir lin. So yeah, we'll do int, int 64t result. So the new rear pointer equals that. And then we want to just push it regular like that. Push the result. And that should work fine. 
Uh, yeah, okay, so maybe that won't work. Uh, this needs to be casted to a word like that. There we go. Okay, so now we can test that out as well. So that is going to be 94, okay. So we'll just do this first one. So test slash n. Okay, and gets to a 0 and negative 94. And then, then we can, yeah. Okay, 1. Actually, we'll just do print. Uh, and now run that. And 5, okay. And that is actually correct. Okay, and then, yeah, we can make this hello world, like that. There we go, and 14. Alright, perfect. So that is actually working. So I can add that here. So when is that? So 94. So what else? What else? Mm -hmm. TikTok. <laughs> uh, Wix. Okay, yeah, we don't need that. How do you... I haven't actually heard of this function. Let me look at that. Uh, yeah. So, alright. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, I have not... Not familiar with that one. Uh, yeah, okay, so I think that was all of them. So, what other standard library functions? Let's do C, uh, standard library functions. And see if there's any other ones that I would want to implement here, um, that are, would be useful, um, at least somewhat useful. So, just kind of go through them all. Maybe not all of them, but, so, abort, uh, yeah, we don't, don't need that. Uh, can I close, yep, there we go, IBM, all right. Assert. Uh, should we have assert? I think that could be kind of cool. So assert, I think I'll make that 100 actually. Native assert. Machine, machine. So basically, we'll just... um. Yeah, so we'll pop... Should we pop two things? So we can have like a message along with the assert? Or should we mm, pop uh, just one, like the... So assert false uh yeah so well so we can't really do a condition right now uh with the way it works but we so we need basically just a value so kind of uh hmm. yeah so if we pop it off and then it is anything other than zero so yeah so I'll just do that. So uh, actually, it is int sixty four t code equals pop machine. That's in, and then assert code, something like that. So let me implement that down here. So uh, I can get rid of these brackets now because we don't actually use them. Case one hundred, and then native assert machine and break. Okay. So now, if I go into here, uh, yeah, so basically I can just uh, native 100, push 1, and that should, alright, so it didn't actually do that. Why, 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 why? So native assert, um, oops, uh, native assert there we go so assert code so hmm and f code oops it is actually uh like that there we go okay one uh so it doesn't actually work like that so because that's true actually so zero is false and there we go. Okay, yeah. So if it's zero, then all right. So we could use that. Um, assertion failed. So that's good. So we have some kind of assert. Uh, yeah. So I can just find that here. Assert is native one hundred. There we go. So that is cool stuff. Uh, so we have these math ones. Uh, I don't think I'm going to worry about that right now. Uh, here is ASCII to int, ASCII to long. Uh, we have, we don't really have that, but 
Yeah, that's fine. Uh, should we implement Kalik alongside Malik though? Uh, do we need that? Is it a good idea? Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's see. So, hmm. Okay, well, let's keep going. Uh, see. So, yep. Clock. Oh, we should probably have time. Way to get time. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So, how do you get time again? So, C time time basically. Uh, yeah. So just time. Is that what you call? So time no. Second, the parent is used to set the time object. All right. So. Okay, so I think we can just use no. Yeah, so we can time. Uh, so that'll be, I don't know what a good number for that would be. Mm, I don't know. So not in the 90s, because that's kind of, uh, maybe I'll just do uh, 10. So, so maybe, okay. So we don't really have no in our language at the moment. Uh, I should probably have like that. That's actually something I didn't even think of. Um, so we won't pop anything. We'll just kind of call time and then push it onto the stack. So that can actually go up here. So it goes right, mm, right after this one. So basically, native time machine machine. And then yes, yeah, so we won't pop anything. So we'll just do uh, time. Right, that is this time t. So we need to include time as well. Uh, yeah. So time yep and then time equals time no and then yeah so then we can just push that actually so ba, 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 machine and time and that should work okay long it as if the word uh yeah so I didn't include it you know I just said that uh so in that h I'll include time.h. There we go. And didn't work. So, oh, do we need to link with it actually? Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we do actually. Uh, oops. Uh, da, da, da. Oh yeah, because we can't call this time. Uh, yeah, so we we'll call it seconds. Uh, seconds and seconds. Okay, and then it should work. There we go. So now, if we have time, which is ten, uh, time is needed ten, then we can get the current time. Uh, native tang, we won't push anything, and then we'll just print it, and we can see what the time is. So, uh, yeah, so that is what it is, and it should be updating. Yep, all right, so you can see it's that's the amount of seconds that have passed. Um, so should we have a way to convert it? Mm, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, all right, let's see what else we have time. Yep, um, bum, bum, bum. so is there any we have exit. Uh, which yeah, end the program. Uh huh. FD open. Get C. So we have a way to open and read a file, but I'm thinking, do we need a way to? No, it's too high because we can read it to a buffer and then we can go through each one. So that is probably fine. Uh. Or F mod. So yep, we've used that. So print F. Uh, I'm not going to implement that because uh, we have the right. So yeah, F read. We do have that. Okay, scan F. Uh, do we want scan F? Because uh, we have the read, which uh, which can get input. So I don't think we need scan F. Uh, yeah. We don't need any of that formatting stuff because it's kind of hard to use within our language. Um, yeah. So, is there any other particular ones that stand out? 
uh, checking that, but I don't think we need that either. So, um, is digit. C is a lowercase letter. Uh, yeah, so we don't, don't need that either. Okay. So, uh, just going through, not any particular ones that stand out. There are all the math functions, and I don't know if I should implement something for those or what, like log and um, cosine, stuff like that. Uh, yes, we have mem copy. Uh, we don't have mem compare though. Should we implement that? Uh, I think it's probably fine for now. Uh, yeah, p error. Okay. So yeah, I think we are good. So I think I might implement null. Um, bum -bum, realloc. Should we implement? Yeah, we should. I should add realloc. Uh, that's probably a good idea. So I can do that right after malloc. So instead of free here, uh, yeah, realloc made it five, and this can just become six. So, uh, that yeah yeah yeah. So I'll put it right in here. Uh, native reality like so and then so the pointer will be actually the top so basically uh, pointer let's see uh, what should I call that uh, ba -ba -bum. so what is it called in here uh, man three reality yeah so it is just uh, reality reallocate array um no so yeah pointer so that's what I'll call it in here uh, pointer pointer equals pop chain dot as pointer. And so that'll pop what we get from malloc. And then the number of bytes to reallocate to, uh, that can be the same. This can be result. So do they call this like, um, yeah, so I just call it result. And then we'll push result like that. And then, yeah, so we do have to change stuff around in here. So this becomes six. And then case five, native realloc chain and break okay and unused variable pointer so uh whoops i need to actually make it real like so there we go all right yeah so that should work i'm gonna trust that it works <laughs> because yeah i don't want to test it right now so we have that now so let's see this is rejects um but you can see how easy it is to implement these functions. So if there's one that I need at any given moment, I can implement it fairly easily. Uh, yeah, string concat, we implemented that. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of string, a lot of string stuff. So tan, uh, tangent. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just kind of quickly going through. If there's any particular ones. Calic, uh, yeah, I don't think I need calic. So... Yeah, I think we're good on that. So let's try to implement null now. So that would just be pushed as a pointer. So let's actually kind of work backwards. So we'll open as in C first. And basically, so you would just push null. Uh, and that's how it would work. <clears throat> so if you have type push. Uh, and then, yeah. So. Let's give. Head value dot type equals and we don't have this type yet but we will type in the then we'll do that and i spelled else wrong okay dot as char so dot as uh pointer uh and yeah just no so uh yeah and that should work Um, yeah, okay, I think so. So then if you go to the parser, then in here, we can expect, after push, we can also check for uh, lexer, token, stack, index. Hmm. Dot type equals, <coughs> does not equal type, no. Uh, and then add an in and there. So then we append that. Okay. And I think that's all that we need for there. So now we're in the lexer. And so we also need to define 
the keyword. So I'll put it after all the other types that we have. Uh, so we have type char, type string, and then yeah, so type no. It's like that. And then uh, I actually need to add that to the mm, to here. So after string, just put no. Like that. There we go. And then da da da. So now mm, basically we need to check if if it's a keyword. Um because that is what it is really. So is that that is where we add the keywords as well. So yeah, so I think that's actually all that we need to do right now. So let me build it. Uh and let me open the test.tasm file and we'll do push no. And it's not actually gonna work. Uh I don't believe it will work. So if we run test.tasm, yep, all right, so put found label. So it thinks it's a label, so because it needs to actually be no. Um so I make it all caps then. Uh, as pointer in the right, so that did work actually. Um, but it pushed it. Yeah, we need to change it. Uh, in here, uh, instruction type equals um, uh, in push pointer because we want it to really push the pointer rather than the value of it. Um, but it still didn't work without that. Uh, so I'm thinking that. Null should probably be all caps. Uh, just I feel like that's better. Uh, so I can just do that pretty easy. And then in the test, uh, we can do that. Build it. And then run this. It's like him. And there we go. Okay, so now we have null values. Uh, and I feel like that could be useful for a couple of things. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, so now that works. What are some other things to implement? I think I can push these changes. So let me actually move test.asm if you want to test.in. Uh, close out of there. Let me just quit this one. I'll just quit out of all of these now. And then, so get add dot. And then added no value as well as uh, ba, 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 a couple of needed functions mostly for working with strings and memory. So I'll push that. Do -do -do. Okay. Um. So let me make sure that worked. And there we go. So, yep, that is still right. Uh, da, da, do. So, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, I think there was an issue in the parser actually where it wasn't, uh, yeah. So, basically, if we encounter an int, then we need to fail because we shouldn't encounter that because it should be handled with the rest of that. So basically, what we need to do is because that would stop us from encountering a lot of like asserts and such. Uh, so basically, we need to we'll just check it at the top. So basically, if um. If expect token, like sir, and then so I'll do four for now. I'm gonna index and four. I uh, type int, type float, uh, type char, type uh, so label is yeah, we, we don't really want to kind of just type label either, and then type string and type uh, no, like that. Then basically, we need to do oh, print f. Standard error. I actually can just do print syntax error. Uh, current token syntax, and then uh, do so. Uh, actually, it's really more of an unexpected character. Unexpected character. Or unexpected, yeah. 
I could kill them. Uh, yeah. And so the second one will leave empty because I don't know exactly what it prints. Uh, but we need to update this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six. Uh, then we compile it. And I need to make sure I didn't break everything. So let me do this. Uh, yeah, okay. So found native. Uh, so that's in Sterling. So 29G. Sterling. Yeah, but found native. So So why is it uh, doing that actually? Make type of in or type of label. So that is in here. Uh, ooh, okay, because this is actually so I need to change this name to string length. Uh, because yeah, because that is actually a macro definition that we made. So now, now if I do it, it should be fine. Yep. Okay. So then everything else seems to work, and I'll just make sure. Ten. Okay, and then three guys. Yep. All right. So that's all still working. Uh, so I didn't break anything. But if we open a test file, I need to actually make the test file. Uh, and now we can open it. Then we try to do something like that. Then we'll get an error. So if I run chasm, okay, expected that. Hello there. Uh, Tanish Solanki, uh, if I pronounce that right. How are you doing? How are you doing? And I do apologize if I mispronounce it. Uh, I'm very bad at pronouncing names. Uh, yeah, expected that, but found in. So, expected uh, non. Alright, so then if I refill that. And run it again. Yep, expected non type. Alright, that is fine. Uh, so now. Uh, if I just put a label here, we'll do the found label, okay, and 5.0, okay, and then also, if I do something like swap 5, then that is incorrect, so, yep, alright, so now, uh, we shouldn't encounter the assert as much, because uh, that is why we're encountering it, so that is good, uh, so that's actually something that I could probably just push on its own, and is that just that okay all right uh yeah so if i just any better error in for encountering types basically is what it is so i'll push that right up there i just think watching your vm series even though i don't understand a thing well that is good that you're watching it um i appreciate it um yeah i don't really understand a lot either um, yeah, so I am, uh, kind of just figuring out as I go. So I didn't understand anything about it until I actually started learning it. Um, like, actually started doing it is when I started to understand. So I started out basically no idea what I was doing, just figuring out as I go. So, um, and there's no problem in that. Like, if you are watching and you don't understand, then, like, you'll get there, you know? Um, yeah. But it's good that you're watching things that you don't understand yet, um, because that's how you understand it is by learning about it, right? So yeah. Uh yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, so maybe this could be moved to a different function. Um I could use a function pointer um in an array and index that instead, but I don't know if that's a good idea, because that can cause some problems. Uh, how do those work again? Function pointer in array. Let's see. Let me see. Function pointer. All right. Um. Yeah. So that's how you define it. Uh, from pointer. Uh, so could I do that? Um, I would have to define each one. I'm not sure. Are you using Linux or WSL? Uh, it is actually Linux. So it's installed on my system. Um, Arch Linux. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. yeah. Uh, it is installed on bare metal or whatever. Ah, uh, yes. No windows here. We need to do that. Uh, yeah. Um, but to do... Yeah, so that is... Is the... Can you make an array of that? Because I'm thinking... Function pointer array. 
So where is, yeah, okay, so you can do that. Uh, if they all take the same argument, which these do, uh, that might be a good idea. Because then we could index. So let me try that. So let me, um, if I just add like a scope thing here, and I do void um, un pointer, or we'll, here, we'll do native pointers, um, and then it just takes machine, uh, machine like that. There we go. And then equals, and then we can put all of them native open, native write, uh, native read. I should probably copy them, but make it close. Native, uh, relic, native re alloc, native three, native time, native exit, native string compare, native. All right, uh, yeah. So let me get rid of some of these now, and I can easily add them back in later. Uh, yeah. All right, native. So after string compare. We've got string copy, mem copy, stir cat, uh, stir lin, uh, and assert. Okay, and I believe that is all in. So, uh, let me actually fix this a little bit. There we go. Let me delete one of those spaces. There we go. And then we go. And And that should be fine now. So uh, we should have that. And then if I do this, and then we can index. I guess we can't really index it because some of them use different numbers. So we, it does need to be a more sequential thing. Uh, yeah. So we won't have the default. So then what we can do is actually in here. Um, uh, so we need to pop the top of the machine. So basically, int 64t index equals pop machine as int. And then we'll just index these. So native pointers index. Uh, and is that how it is called? So um, that, uh, So we need to actually do it like that and then machine there we go so i think that is the right syntax um and then so we can try it and i see the build okay so the statement oh so i need to just uh, break there we go okay so that actually compiled so let's see if it works so we'll just use the right disco so if i go into here Hello world. Uh, okay, so it didn't work. So zero one. So that should have worked. Uh, so let me open a test chasm. Oops, and there we go. Test chasm. That's the wrong one. And then I will just do native one. Uh, so that's right. So basically, push in it out. Uh, push to one, two, three, and then mm, I'll add the new line so it's easier to read. Uh, yeah, and then you can get sir zero. All right, so let me try this. Let's not try them. Uh, but found it. Yeah, because we don't have standard out in here. So push one. Got ten. Okay, so that doesn't actually work. So uh, is that not calling it? Or what is? Uh, ooh, okay. So actually, it's because we don't want to pop it. Uh, so that is the issue. Uh, instead of popping, we want to get um, get the machine instruction IP dot write. Uh, dot as a. There we go. Uh, needed pointers. Okay. Uh, it's instruction. It's Instructions. There we go. Okay, so now if we try it, I uh, must fire hello world. No, it's uh, test.10. Okay, so now if we go into test, 
Hello world 10, and it works. Okay, so that is good. So now we can use that, but we do need to update these to accurately reflect it. Um, so it's going to be a bit harder to remember. So we could insert it one at a time with the indexes that we want. Um, should I do that? Let's see. I'll do something like that. Will it fail if I do that? All right, so that works. So then what if I do... Uh, let's see. So native pointers 60 equals um equals native uh native exit does that work whoops no 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 all right and let's see will that okay so if i do it like that all right and then if i open up here and i do native 60 Then I mean echo with that and one. All right. So if I make this uh 420, uh and then like that, look, and now I get follow up. So there we go. Uh 164. So that is actually too big of a number. I forgot. So I use a smaller number. Uh, I'm actually I need to recompile it. There we go. Okay. And now, all right. So that does work actually. So. I think I'm going to set them like that. So it's not completely ideal, but it's going to make it a lot easier. So the first ones, all the way up to time. So time cannot be. So because time was 10. So native pointers 10 equals native time. So I can actually yeah, make devs and I can see them all. So yeah, time and then exit is 60 and then string compare. These pointers are 90. Was native silicon, and then have a couple of these. So 91, 92, 93, 94. So after string compare, our uh, string copy, native stir copy, and then we have main copy. Yep, main copy. Okay, and then string concatenate and string length and stir one okay and then after that we have 99 and we have 100 okay so 99 is a toa and then this is a cert okay and then we can get rid of it from the initializer um so yeah it starts right here And then we need to close it like that. There we go. Build it. And then all the tests should still work. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'll try div chasm, div tin. All right. And then fizz buzz, actually. Fizz buzz chasm, fizz buzz tin. Okay. And then we'll try the open uh, interpolum test. All right, so why did it? Okay, so <coughs> test. All right, uh, so that did actually work though. Um, the naming was a little weird, but I think it's going to have to do uh, test.txt actually. Uh, yeah. There we go. And then test.txt has that. So that all works. So it all seems to work now. And um, while well, it's not ideal like this, um, it still works. So it's better than the switch statement that we had. Um, however, if we index out of bounds, we use an incorrect one, then it will cause some problems. So like if we do native 11, uh, yeah, so native 11, then it's going to have a stroke and die. Uh, test not chasm, test not pin. yeah, segmentation fault. So that's not ideal. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how to go about doing that because we're not using just the regular index. So I'll need to think about that. Uh, but now, uh, that should be much better. So, we have all those now. Um, that's pretty cool. So, did I... I just want to make sure I didn't forget any. Um, I do. Yeah, okay, so that looks good. Uh, so, I can actually commit that now. Um, yeah, so basically, added um, 
or change the switch switch statement to an array index in or with the native function. There we go and push that. Okay. And then if I refresh this. Then okay, perfect. So that worked. Um, so that is perfect. Um, okay. So getting close to the end, so I'm gonna have to end the stream pretty soon. Uh, but let's see. All right. So now it is clean. Uh, and let me see. So I'm not sure what other what other ones I should implement. Uh, what are the natives? Uh, basically, what we need now, so we need returns. Um, yeah, so just, I don't think I have, I still do have it. So, yeah, we need, like, at the end of a label, we can just do return. Um, so that is something that we'll need. Uh, that is quite important. So we're going to have to think about how to implement that. Uh, we also need array indexing, or... String indexing at least. So stir index, yeah, like five. So like that. Um, not that exact same syntax, but similar thing to that. Uh, because right now we can kind of do that by just adding to it. Um, yeah. So we could do something like that, but it's not. Um, well, I guess that does work pretty well. So I'll think about that. Um, I'm just trying to think what all the things are that we need. So. Mm hmm. I can actually add it to the to-do list. Uh, so basically, add a uh, ret keyword. Uh, so that is very high priority to implement that. Um, <clears throat> so I think we need more ways to interact with the string stack. Because um, right now we can push the stir. We can get the stir. Uh, but that's it. So we should be able to at least pop the string. Pop the string. Um, and so we need a way to also push a string that uh, that we modify. So if we, well, do we need that? Oh, I'm not sure that we need that. I need to think about how we can use this, but we definitely need to be able to pop one. So I'm thinking, should I use just the regular push keyword? And then you could like push data or push string like that, where there's a space in between them, and then you have all the string. Or it's regular push, and you push, um, well, let's see, what's a good name for it? It's just like, uh, push word, uh, and then you can put a value. Would that be a good idea? I'm not sure. not so sure about that. Uh, because then there would be less total instructions, um, but it's not quite as intuitive. So I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need pop string. Um, do we need, like, uh, stir in spot? Uh, is that like all the instructions that we have? Uh, we have all of these. Um, then we would be able to. That would probably be useful actually, because when we when we are using the uh, string sterling, the example that we have here, sterling, uh, we have this. But if we could swap it, so the index is different. Um, like so, we could basically do that, and then swap it with the zero width ones. Then we know it's always at the zero with index or something like that. Um, it would be kind of hard to keep track of when like a library would be doing that, uh, like this, if you were to import it as a library. But I think it would be useful because then, then you don't necessarily have to deal with absolute values. You just kind of move it how you want and then use it like that. And then you could move it back afterward, potentially. Um, yeah, so I think that is that is a good idea. So. Uh, probably index swap and then uh, in dupe. Uh, that would probably be useful as well. Um, what other ones do we have? So we have the compare, uh, but right now we have string compare. So uh, we basically have an instruction for that. Uh, and let's see. So then jump. Um, we don't need that for strings. Um, so really it's just the swaps and the dupes um, that we would need. Because uh, we can concatenate strings with the native functions. So, 
Yeah, so we need basically all these. So the pop, dupe, index dupe, swap, and index swap. Um, all those would probably be useful. And then, then we have pretty much all the instructions that we need to uh, to basically work with the string stack. So swap and stir dupe. Um, so yeah, again, I'm not so sure I want to implement them as instructions though, because it gets kind of kind of messy doing that. Uh, but it might be a good idea. So it would be implemented just uh, right after the right after these ones. So then, yeah, I probably won't implement them right now. But um, so I'm trying to think. Uh, is there any other instructions that we would need for working with the stack? Uh, well, here we can add that to the to do list. So add um. Uh, access to string string stack specifically um for pop stir dupe and in dupe um and stir uh swap in, in swap okay um yeah so we have that so whoops i need to close that actually so if we had those i'm trying to think all that we would need to be able to make um a full fully functioning programming language from this assembly. Um, so what are some things that you wouldn't be able to do if you had basically these things that I described here, so the return statements and then access to the string stack. Um, so, well, if we look at some of these projects, um, so you don't have a way to, uh, to make GUIs, but we could add something, basically a native function, uh, which which basically interacts with OpenGL um, or a similar thing, Raylib, whatever, any C library, really. Um, and then you could, yeah, that could be cool. Uh, then we could make GUI applications. Um, so that, we could also add, obviously, we're going to need sockets. Um, so we could make a website as well. Uh, basically any of those things i think work best uh implementing them as native functions like this um yeah i think that makes a lot of sense so yeah this is so let's just kind of look through some of these and see what we would need to implement so for this um we could dupe if we had access to the string stack we could dupe it so say there's race car on there you duplicate it and then you reverse it so uh, is that something that we could do from inside the assembly? Reverse a string. Um, I don't know. Like, um, perhaps. So that's probably something you could do. And you could obviously see how the dupe would be useful for that. Uh, cause otherwise you'd have to, well, I guess you can just dupe the pointer to it anyway, but, um, well, yeah, I guess if you are using the pointer, then it, yeah. So maybe that wouldn't be great. So duping the string would be useful for that. Uh, yeah, count words in a string. So yeah, so basically uh, that's just checking for spaces. Um, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, we probably could do that now in this. Um, ciphers. Um, I think we can implement ciphers now. Here's networking stuff, which sockets obviously would be very useful for. Um, yeah, I don't. We would need basically access to syscalls on the extremely low level if we were going to do that without otherwise. Um, but yeah, so product inventory. We also need a way to check probably what operating system is being used um, because certain things might be operating system dependent. So that is something. Classes, so I don't care about classes. Uh, Multi-threading, so that that should probably be a native one as well uh, but i think we can do something like that so web of course that's the same thing files uh databases uh yeah so graphics and multimedia so if we added either opengl or like gtk something like that um yeah mm -hmm. yeah caesar cipher mm, web threading so Text data structures. 
um once once it gets to a certain point i should try to implement some certain data like um link list and things like that in the actual assembly uh because if you can implement most major data structures like uh link list um arrays you can use those um hash map stuff like that then it's pretty good so actually how do you uh, check if language is turning complete what what are like some tests that you can do for that uh because i would like to show that actually um so there are certain things where you can test that uh there we go Turing completeness mm. <clears throat> so what are some examples uh let's see so All right. Um, yeah. So, what is something that we can do to test? Yeah, I just want to know how to test it, basically. All right. Um. So. Test to see if language is turning complete. Uh, yeah. Um, bum, bum, bum. yeah, so we're nearing the end of the stream. I just want to see this, and this is, so that is test turning complete. Uh, because I want it to be turning complete, obviously. Um, and I'm pretty sure it is at this point uh, with all the stuff that we have. So, um, um, yeah, project guidelines, some form of dynamic allocation. Um, Recursive functions or some all right infinite loop. You have those and you can do anything at all interesting. Alright. Uh you open a lambda calculus. Alright, so that is something lambda calculus. Um turn completeness. Uh da, da, da. so I know that there's certain programs that you can write that if they execute properly prove turn completeness or whatever. Uh it's turn complete. So how do you uh ba -ba -da. yeah so a brain frick interpreter bounded loops and unbounded loops okay yes yeah, so this is what we looked at before um lambda calculus yep uh, yes, I understand this. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna do some research on that and find a find something to write that would prove that. Um. So, but I think other than that, uh, that's going to be it for today. So let me post the to do list. Uh, maybe the to do list. And probably could like do GitHub issues or something like that instead of an actual text file, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, so if that worked properly, then okay. So yeah, that's gonna be the end. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.